loser. Big sack! Kevin fired to the house. One, two, three scores. Get tight, get it done. Okay. This week on Titans All Access, the Titans are 2-0 and in the AFC South and are coming home to host Monday Night Football against the AFC's hottest team. Crucial Catch is the league's initiative to honor those who've battled cancer. Monday's 12th Titan Cheryl Crow shares her story. Ben Jones is known for his toughness and is this week's Nissan Insider. Plus, Coach Mack is back to break down the biggest plays from Sunday's win against the Jacksonville Jaguars. All of this and much more coming up on Titans All Access. The monster, Derrick Henry, sack! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. The Titans are 2-0 in the AFC South after going to Jacksonville last Sunday and posting an 18-point victory. And you know, I think Derrick Henry said it best when he said it wasn't pretty, but it was beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that good? I think it was. Mike, what do you think the Titans can take from that game as they enter what is a challenging stretch of AFC games? Well, I think there's a lot that they can take from it. Most specifically, if they take care of their business, they can beat anybody. And that is if they play good third down defense, if they do well themselves offensively on third down and in the red zone they score touchdowns, and if they don't make big mistakes. There's a lot to improve on from that game. It wasn't pretty, but it was beautiful because it was a win. But what you take away is the big things they did well. If the Titans can take care of the little things and continue to take care of the big things, they can be successful the rest of the way. Well, and the Titans are getting ready to play on a big stage on Monday Night Football. What do you remember from Monday Night Football games? I remember every Monday Night Football of game the Titans have ever played. <laughs> two of my favorites, 2007 at the Superdome. Mr. Monday Night, Keith Bullock, called his shot. He said, I'm going to play big. He intercepted three passes. He became Mr. Monday Night that evening, September 24th, 2007. And the following year, the year the Titans started 10-0 and won the AFC South 2008, Monday Night Football against the rival Colts, code blue for the first time at Nissan Stadium. Huge fourth down stop, turns the game around. Titans go on to win to basically that night clinch the division. Those are the two that really jump out to me. And this Monday night against the Bills, it could be another great one overall. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Undoubtedly. So we're going to talk about crucial catch in this program, something very important from the National Football League. And I was so excited to talk with somebody who's going to be a big part of this on Monday night, the great artist Cheryl Crow. But up next on Titans All Access, another big star, Ben Jones sits down with our Amy Wells and the Nissan Insider. Stay tuned for that. The mayor of Murfreesboro, Kevin Byard, is known for his ball hawk skills. And on Sunday, number 31 did something he's never done in his NFL career. Here's Dave McGinnis with the analysis. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. First third down of the ball game. Watch Trevor Lawrence take the snap. He starts to look to his left, very well covered downfield, so he goes to his check down, his tight end, on a flat route to the outside. Great trigger by Elijah Molden. Breaks on the ball, puts his head across the bow, ball is out, Kevin Byard, the entire defense is racing to the football, pick it up and go with it, let the officials sort it out. The officials sorted it out correctly. Touchdown Titans, huge way to open the ball game for the Titans defense. We welcome you back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. A lot of stars on this edition of Titans All Access, including one that's clearly a star within the Titans locker room, and I'm talking about Ben Jones. A longtime outstanding center for the Tennessee Titans, Ben Jones is one of the most respected players in the Titans locker room. And as our Amy Wells sits down with him, 
our Nissan Insider. Ben Jones lays out the parts of the game that are still important to keep him playing well into his 30s. Tomorrow, tomorrow is here. Ben Jones, this is your 10th season in the National Football League. 10 years. Why are you still here? Like, why are you still doing this? You've been successful, you've made some good money, you're a great teammate, you've proven everything. Why do you come back? <laughs> I'm a competitor, and the reason I play this sport is to win a championship, and I don't have that yet. And I've been close, I've won division championship, Russian titles, but I play this game to win a championship, and that's what I want to do. How is it different now than it was in your first couple years in the National Football League? The first couple years, you're trying to figure out what the NFL is about. How do you stay in this league? Because they always tell you NFL stands for not for long, and you don't want to be going across the ticker. You don't want to ever get cut. And I didn't want to disappoint my family, so I just I found a veteran stuck in his hip pocket and kind of learned the ropes. And now it's. I've been in his 10 years and now I'm the guy who's bringing the young kids along, molding this and trying to be the foundation blocks in this team to win a championship. Who was that veteran that you stuck to your first couple of years? Chris Myers. Um, getting drafted to Houston, um, playing center in college. He was a Pro Bowl center uh, multiple years in Houston. and just modeling his game because I started my first three years in the league at guard and just being able to play beside him, how he ran his offense, how he inducted the meetings, how he lived his family life, everything I try to pull from him. And then after him retiring, I transitioned back to center and literally since then I've tried to model my game after him, how to be a leader in the locker room and from having a family at home. Now when a young guy comes in, if they're smart, they'll attach themselves to a guy like you who's had some longevity and experience. What are you looking for in a young guy that you say, that guy's got it? Yeah, you want a kid who's eager to learn and can do it day in and day out. You don't want a guy who just flashes. You want a guy who's going to come out to work every day and try to get better because this is a long season, it's a long thing. Anybody can be good for a day. You got to stack days together day in and day out. And you got to put, this offensive line's not pretty. You can have 60 great plays and one bad play and you had a bad game. So it's about being consistent and doing it day in and day out. What can you do to try and increase your consistency, I guess? What do you work on specifically to either get your body right or your mind right or some combination of both? Right, for me being consistent is making all the calls in the other line, getting them out quick so everybody else don't have to think. My job is to get everybody set so we can go out there and, and not have to think about, hey, what, what's going on? I want to be crystal clear and guys can go out there and let it loose and have fun. Now let me throw a stat at you. The Tennessee Titans as it stands right now the offensive line is the fourth oldest line in the National Football League. Does that make you feel old, personally? Uh, when I got here six years ago, I think we were the youngest. I was the oldest guy going into year five. And now being 32 years old, um, I just think we're a little wiser. We know how to work. We know we got to earn it every day. And we have a bunch of guys who are competing for that same goal. We want to win a championship. It's got to be useful, too, that you've grown up together. So many people on this offensive line know each other, know the ins and outs, because that chemistry is so important, right? Playing beside Roger and Nate now going on for three years, um, you build a bond. You kind of know where they're going to be, but you still got to earn it every day. No matter our success over the past couple of years, we want to be better. We want to be the Russian title. We're trying to win the championship. It's not just, oh, win the division, win home game. We want to take it all the way, and we're just doing building blocks. and. As an older guy, you're taking it one play at a time. See my pen? October is the NFL's crucial catch month. What does that mean? Well, I sit down with music legend Cheryl Crow to talk about it. A very important discussion up next on Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access in the Bet MGM studio. And as you know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So the National Football League is highlighting all types of cancer in their crucial catch games. And this upcoming week happens to be the Titans crucial catch game. And there's no better way to celebrate that than to have Cheryl Crow as the Titans 12th Titan. Mike Keith had the chance to talk to her and have a very important conversation. Check this out. 
I, I want to go back to 2006. Here you are, you've won nine Grammys, you've sold 50 million records. Tuesday Night Music Club's one of my favorite albums ever. It's one of the most iconic albums of the 90s for sure. I mean, you're on a roll and it's time for a mammogram. You nearly blow it off, is that true? I did, I was going through some personal stuff. I didn't feel like stopping everything to go to just an appointment. Um, it wasn't that I was worried about having breast cancer because I didn't have anybody in my family that had it. I was very fit at the time, taking care of myself, and I just didn't think I was a candidate for having a, you know, a diagnosis of something that could be life-threatening, and, and so I almost put it off. It was also Grammys week, and it just seemed like it's all, it's just not good timing, but I, I had seen my gynecologist earlier, and she said, look, we don't put these things off because timing is everything. Um, even though it might not be good timing for you, it matters. And so I went and they called me back and I had a, a needle biopsy just on something that looked routinely suspect and turned out it was invasive cancer. And it was a showstopper. I mean, if, if you think that you control everything in your life, you are so wrong. And it takes those um, moments where life comes kind of screeching to a halt to realize that there are some things that are just out of your control and you know early detection is, is our best weapon and that's really true across the board for all cancers so personal when you go through something like this and you talk about it so openly is the early detection part of it now something you feel like is your mission to get across to people? Yeah, I would not have chosen to be the poster child for, uh, for cancer. You know, there are lots of other things I'd rather draw attention to. But this felt so immediate to me because, and vital to me, because when you get diagnosed with cancer or any life-threatening illness, it's not just you that gets diagnosed. It's your, it's your family, it's your friend, base, you know, it's your posse, your tribe. For me, it was not just my family, it was my whole work family. Everybody got put on hold. And not only does that happen, but it also brings mortality into the spectrum. You know, you start realizing, wow, life is short and I am not invincible. And it makes you look at things that not only are hard to look at, but that change the way you look at everything from that point on. So for me, it was a, a blessing in disguise, but at the same time, not something I would ever recommend to have happen to anybody I know. So yes, go and get your mammograms. Don't put it off. You know, whatever, your colonoscopies, whatever, whatever you are in the age bracket for getting tested for, do it. You know, it is, it is a hassle, but it can be a game changer. You talked about how you're proud of your sons looking up to athletes. I'm sure part of the reason you're diving into Crucial Catch is you're supportive and proud of the National Football League for choosing to do this early detection, yes. not just for breast cancer now, but for all kinds of cancer. It's been incredible what the sports community has done. And I love the fact that the Titans, you know, they're, they're honoring Breast Cancer Month. And you know, that may not resonate with everyone, but I can guarantee you that you know somebody who has had breast cancer. Whether it's a sister, a mom, a cousin, a daughter, a friend, it is everywhere and it is all around us. And the fact that the NFL, which is made up of predominantly men, want to honor their mothers, their sisters, their cousins, their wives, by saying, look, this is something that we want to encourage everyone to be aware of, that getting your yearly mammogram matters. Cheryl Crow, excited to see you at the ball game. Thank you Thank for you. everything that you're doing for Crucial Catch. And just remember, most importantly, tighten up. Yes, tighten up. If you've ever seen Titans All Access, you know that my favorite segment is Mike Keith's Keys. But my second favorite segment, well, that's Talking Ball with General Manager John Robinson, presented by Duncan. That's on the other side of this break. There have been some great goal line stands since Mike Vrabel has been head coach of the Titans. Let's get Coach Mack to break down the one against the Jaguars on Sunday. Fourth quarter score, 31-19. Titans have got five up on the line of scrimmage, man-to-man -man across the board. Watch when Trevor Lawrence starts to drop back, sticks his foot in the ground, starts over to his right. Nothing is there, comes to his left. Kevin Byer does a tremendous job as a post safety. Looks at the quarterback, 
Now he takes the proper angle, goes and makes a big time tackle. This leads to the fourth and one. Fourth and a blade of grass. Watch Tier Tart. Tier Tart does a tremendous job of getting off on the football, gets skinny for a big man, explodes into the backfield, forces the running back to go immediately lateral. Chris Jackson makes a tremendous across the bow tackle. And then here comes the Calvary. Everybody racing to the football. This is as good a goal line defense as you're ever going to see in the National Football League at a very critical point in this football game. It's time to talk ball with General Manager John Robinson, presented by Duncan. And let's start with offensive improvement at Jacksonville. Titans, much better job, third down offense, red zone offense at Jacksonville over what happened against the Jets. What did you see in terms of that improvement? Well, it was certainly a point of emphasis throughout the course of, of the week, you know, offensively getting into drives, staying into drives, pushing the ball downfield, converting on third down, moving the line of scrimmage, controlling the line of scrimmage. And then when we got down to the red zone, coming away with touchdowns. It's so important and so pivotal, you know, certainly in those division matchups. All right, third down defense, good at Jacksonville again. Third down defense is much improved over last year. Why do you think that is? Another point of emphasis in the offseason and certainly through training camp in the first few weeks of the season here, you know, it's all about rushing coverage on, on third down. And you're not always going to rack up five or six sacks of games, but if you can move that quarterback off the spot, you know, get him moving around in the pocket, force an errant throw, plaster coverage-wise by the DBs, you know, it gives us a really good chance to get off the field on third down. Wide receiver Marcus Johnson comes off injured reserve, three catches for 52 yards. What does Marcus Johnson add to the Titans wide receiver core? Yeah, he's done a nice job. You know, he spent time on our practice squad a little bit last year. Uh, he's got good size. He's got good speed, good route running ability, he contributes in the kicking game. Certainly came up with some big plays for us Sunday in the Jacksonville win. Turn to the Buffalo game for Monday night football. Bills are said to be a passing team, and yet they're rushing for 140 yards per game. How are they doing that? Good offensive line. You know, it all starts up front with those guys. They played together for a long time now. They know you know, the nuances that each other bring to the to the game, to the to their position groups. They spread you out personnel-wise a little bit to try to get a defender removed from the box. Moss and Singletary, both good backs. And this Josh Allen is playing lights out. He's certainly good throwing it, but he's a problem in the run game, tucking it and running. Okay, so finally, this is your fourth straight year to play Buffalo in October. It's very strange schedule-wise. Does it help your preparation that you have seen them each of the last three years? From a personnel familiarity standpoint, it does, Mike. You know, you, you kind of know the skill sets, the strengths, and you know what weaknesses certain players might have. You're familiar with them because there's you've seen them every single year. There's not a ton of turnover roster-wise, year in and year out. And they're a good football team. They've added some pieces. They've changed and added a few wrinkles into their offensive and defensive schemes. And it's going to be a tough game. John, look forward to seeing you Monday night at Nissan Stadium. Yeah, I'm excited, Mike. Talking ball with John Robinson, presented by Duncan every week on Titans All Access. Amy Wells rejoins me to continue the show right after this. Once again, King Henry reigns supreme against his hometown team. Dave McGinnis is back to look at his three touchdowns in Jacksonville. The Yuli Bulldozer. This is the first of his three touchdowns. Watch the blocking up front as the ball is snapped. Derrick Henry takes one step to his right in an eye formation puts his helmet right in the back of his fullback, blasts him into the end zone, touchdown Titans, the first of three for Derrick Henry. Second touchdown coming up. Watch the guard and the tackle, double team and move up to the second level. Ben Jones does a tremendous job blocking back on number 90. The hole opens. This is a massive, massive hole, untouched to the end zone. This is a beautifully blocked play from five yard lines on in. Third and final touchdown for Derrick Henry. Watch the get off and watch the knockback from the entire Titans offensive front. Derrick Henry's got a full head of steam going downhill. Third touchdown for the Titans. This is a great example of the Tennessee Titans and their run game wearing an opponent down throughout the course of the ball game. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It's time for the best part of the show, the highlight, Mike Keith's keys. Mike. Take it away. All right. Flattery will get you everywhere, by the way. They really are. They're great this Thank season. Thank you so much. You're on fire. Key number one against Buffalo, it's about the Tennessee offense. They've got to throw the football efficiently. What does that mean? Complete a high percentage of passes, don't drop the ball, and have some good run after the catch. Buffalo has an outstanding defense, 
you've got to take advantage of your opportunities. You can't miss completions. You've got to stay on the field, make things happen in the passing game in order to open up the running game. That means you've got to throw the football efficiently. All right, what's key number two? Time of possession. Same sort of general premise. If you throw the football efficiently and you run it, you can keep it for 35, 36, 37 minutes, which would be a great goal for the Tennessee offense because Buffalo's offense is so good, you want to keep them off the field. You help your own defense by winning time of possession if you're the Titans offense. All right, what's the final key? The final key in the ball game is just understanding that Buffalo's offense is so explosive. You cannot allow big plays. This has been a huge problem for the Titans in the last two games. They have got to make Buffalo drive the football. It's something that we've seen from the Titans defense. When they eliminate big plays, when they make the opposition drive the football, they have become very effective. They cannot give Josh Allen the big plays in this game, or it's going to be hard to beat the hottest team in the NFL, the Buffalo Bills. They've outscored their last four opponents 156 to 41. All right, so do everything right on offense and defense, and you should probably be okay. That's it. All right. Just win the game. There that's it that's is. the key. All right, so we got Monday Night Football. We're on the air at 6 Central on Titans Radio with Titans Countdown. Coming up next week, it's Kansas City, and we will preview the Chiefs from the Bet MGM studio as we get you ready for the Titans and Kansas City. That's next week on Titans All Access. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.